Get ready to quit the bill. The QTB crew is rounding up all the gaming news and hot topics of the week with a little extra something. And here are your hosts, Bruno and Nick. What it do? Welcome to the QTB podcast. We're so glad you could join us. My name is Bruno, and with me, as always, is my childhood friend and co host, Nick Blast Hard Cheese. How are you, sir? That is the name that I use about two days after I go for the Taco Bell Crunch Wrap Supreme. Oh yeah, 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 because it's 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 the wrong kind of blast, not the Baja Blast. Um, oh boy, but yeah, thanks, man. Happy to be yeah, here. Buddy. Another exciting episode, and uh, boy, got a big uh, a lot of uh, feedback uh, from a lot of our Twitter followers. Been uh, been on the Twitter game lately, and uh, we'll be doing some shout outs a little bit later on. But uh, thanks everybody so much for following us there at uh, you know Quit the Build on on Twitter and yeah. uh, checking us out. You know, like like we, like you've been saying, Bruno, the, the community is building every single day, and uh, we're really really excited to be a part of it. Seriously, we have an awesome community growing right now with tons of places where you can reach us. You can actually find us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and we actually have a Discord going on, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, if you head over to quitthebuild.com slash community, you can find all of those links and some amazing Dirty Berg Earth Ploppers, the Martinsburg <laughs> Plops, as I yes. like to call them. Uh, Nick, how have the Plops been doing? I heard they had a game recently or something happened. Well, you know, I, I think our running gag here with the Plops is that they they – they get scheduled for games, but something yeah. always happens. They're like the Matt Damon of interviews. Yeah, totally. Like at the last second, it's like, oh no, you know, there was some kind of catastrophic event. We couldn't, we couldn't get the uh, the plops out there. So yeah, yeah. I think their basketball t- their basketball game got rained out for some reason. I'm not sure why they play outside, but <laughs> yeah, that happens if that's yeah. the case. So, but man, we actually have a special guest here with us today. I'm excited to bring on my good buddy, our good friend and an amazing streamer on twitch kung fu penguin uh we know him as joel how are you doing sir gentlemen doing so well it is wonderful it's been fun to see the rise of team quit the build and the podcast is doing so well so i'm happy to be here childhood friends here you know i i've known you all for Many moons at this point, and uh, wow. many. Since, um, I think middle school, fifth grade, maybe something like that. I don't middle know. school, yeah. we go back uh, even high school, even in college, right? Yeah, we were, yeah, like, uh, working exactly. For the same youth group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're we're right. we got so many connections here, and so it is an honor and a privilege to be on the podcast with you all. Jeez, that's a throwback. We had what Bruno on drums. Uh, yeah. I was on keys, and yeah, uh, you, were the, you were the sound engineer for a while there, Joel. Right? I, I that at different points, I I probably helped with it. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I mean, there's uh, we've just kind of just followed along with each other throughout the socials as as time goes on, because some, you know, sometimes when you you just find those special people in your life, you just want to hold on to them and never let them go. Even if you are 3000 miles away like I am, because I'm on the West Coast while these gentlemen are on the East Coast. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we we're repping everybody in between. But, uh, man, we have some sweet, sweet gaming merch to uh, to give away to hear to our listeners um all you have to do is write a review on apple Podcasts, and you guys have been on it you really have you've been leaving some some amazing reviews and uh actually all all those who write a review on apple Podcasts will be entered into our monthly giveaway um the ratings really do help us out so we appreciate it and the support that we get from you guys Uh, You can actually go and see all of that gaming merch via Pierce Unlimited. Today's podcast was sponsored in part by Pierce Unlimited. For marketing media that works in bespoke design to power your business, visit PierceUnlimited.com. Let's kick things off, Nick, because I know we have some interesting things up here. And one of my favorite things to talk about, uh, obviously, first is... I'm still on the hunt for the Nintendo Switch, and it looks like I might be doing a little more waiting because... Well, yeah, the uh, the Super Nintendo Switch. 
It's on yeah, its way. Right? We're, gonna, we're gonna cover that, um, and of course the uh, the Outriders demo uh, coming up from Square Enix a little bit later in the show, talking about the success of that demo. Uh, everyone everyone's playing it, and also we're gonna have a special segment later on with with Joel, aka Kung Fu Penguin on Twitch, a big Fortnite streamer. We're gonna be talking about one of our blog articles about the top uh, rather uh, events from Fortnite. And, and yeah. ranking those things. Yeah, that's always yeah, fun buddy. to do, right? So uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, so what you're talking about, Bruno, is our first uh, article for the day, which is, it, it's not so much a confirmation, but we do have a, a yet another leak. Um, it seems like the Nintendo leaks have been plentiful lately, and Nintendo's very good at just denying whether or not, you know, there's any credibility to them, um, and then yeah. just coming out later <laughs> and being like, yeah, it was all, it was all true. <laughs> um, but the guy who uh, put out this latest leak, his name is Nate Drake, and he, he's very reputable among uh, the gaming community as a guy that you know when he when he leaks something, it's 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 probably probably going to be true. Um, so you know, what we originally were calling the Switch Pro as kind of a tentative name is now. Uh, wait 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 wait. His yeah. name is Nate Drake. Well, that's his that's his alias. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say. Wait a minute. That sounds awfully familiar. Uh, I, <laughs> he just goes by Nate now. He's no longer into like, you know, uncharted stuff. He right. just, I'm just an accountant now guy. Yeah. Like I'm, my name is Nate, just straight Nate. <laughs> yeah. It's like Superman. He just puts on a, a pair of glasses and who is that guy? I don't. <laughs> That's Nate from accounting. Yeah, he's, exactly. He's pretty, he's, isn't he handsome? Look at that jawline. <laughs> <laughs> Chiseled. He oh could be way gosh. more than an accountant. I don't know what he's doing here. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, that's you know, no one's stupid enough to use the real name for these things. <laughs> but so it, we we knew kind of that a Switch Pro was probably going to be happening by the holidays this year. Uh, yeah. but we didn't have a whole lot of details, and of course, speculation was running wild. But now we have, I mean, still leaks. It's still not confirmed. But like I said, very reputable leaker here. So it's worth talking about about what the Super Nintendo Switch is going to be. By the way. I love that name. I knew you were going to say it, and I can't. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it brings back so many memories of nostalgia. Joel, what do you think about the name? Were you hoping for Switch Pro, or does this just like no, ring I, those bells? Please be the Super Nintendo Switch, please. <laughs> right? For all that is good in the world, I, like that's that's. I mean, for me, that's really where I played a lot on the original Nintendo, but Super Nintendo is where I really started gaming a ton on when I was yeah. a kid. And um, man, that was that's what I really feel would be just so fun. Like I just I just hope that that's it. Yeah, I mean it's uh, yeah right. It just thinking about like the, the the original Nintendo and then you know the the Super Nintendo, uh, Super NES rather. Um, just adding Super onto the beginning makes things so much cooler in the in the Mario. <laughs> it really world. does. We, we fall for it every time, don't we? <laughs> Um, yep. <laughs> that uh, well, it's super. It has to be good. But yep. um, yeah, so apparently that will be the name. We, we actually have some specs to kind of sink our teeth into to understand, you know, the reason why somebody would want to get this over a standard switch. Um, and like we were talking about before, Bruno, your hunt for this thing might actually get easier because if everybody's yeah. upgrading their console, um, you know, places like GameStop are going to get flooded with uh, with you know their the old switches. So if you're willing to get a, a secondhand unit, you actually might get a good deal. Well now now with these with with what you're with what we're what I'm seeing here, I mean, uh, it's gonna be hard to say like, oh yeah, um I'm gonna justify getting the Switch when the Switch Pro or the Super Nintendo yeah. Switch looks so much more amazing. This, this, what is this, 4K output, Nick, I'm saying? Yeah, well, when the bots uh, buy this thing up and sell them online for $1,500, <laughs> you you may actually consider buying the, the last one, right? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, we'll go kind of over, the, over the, the technical specs from this leak. So the first thing is we're going to have a larger display for the handheld unit. Uh, a seven inch display versus uh, six point two inches for the standard switch. So it gets a little bit of an upgrade there. Yeah. Um, and they are going over to the OLED screen versus an LCD screen, which, of course, much more uh, vibrant color. Um, yeah, really, really pops, um, which is definitely nice with those bright, colorful, uh, you know, Nintendo games. I'm sure Animal oh, yeah. Crossing would look amazing on a on an OLED screen. Totally. Um, but yeah, you're right. So 4K output. So this is only going to be, according to this leak, when the unit is docked. Yeah, um, I mean, when, it's yeah, understandable. Very understandable. Um, and it's still going to be in 720p, just like the standard Switch, when hmm. you are in handheld mode. Now, I have seen some skepticism online about, like, okay, 
are they really going to have a unit that can display 4K? Because the Switch, as it is right now, is not a very powerful machine. Yeah. Um, you know, Nintendo's good at optimizing games for it, but um, you know, I, 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 Joel, you're you're a tech guy. Do you think it's possible for a handheld unit like that to really have you know solid 4K output power? I, I mean, it'll be interesting. It's going to depend on what chipset they're going to use. The ARM chip that they have for the original one was surprisingly good for what it was. I mean, it it could do a decent bit. Uh, it's a little bit of a bummer that it was a 720p panel on the handheld. Um, yeah. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see if that really sways people. I love that it is an OLED. That is really mm-hmm. great. Like you said, yeah. that's going to look great for the like bright and colorful games that Nintendo produces. But um, who knows? I mean, phones now, the chips are, are able to output 4K. And games like Genshin Impact, I'm not sure if you can do 4K with Genshin Impact, but... It looks really good on a phone, um, which is crazy. So who knows? Um, I I'm excited to see. I'm optimistic here. Um, I would I would love to see what uh, Nintendo has cooked up for it. Yeah, and you know, talking about the, the chipset. So we don't have specifics, but uh, this leak is saying that this unit will be roughly equivalent to a PlayStation Four in terms of what's inside the uh, what's inside the box there. So oh, wow. I mean, you know, it's possible. But here's the thing, right? When, when people start throwing around the term 4K, you have to be a little dubious. You have to be like, okay, well, what do you actually mean by that? And, you know, um, for example, Google Stadia is that now um, the recip- uh, recipient of a lawsuit because and, and Bungie too, because Destiny, they claimed that the game was going to be in 4K um, or uh, up, up to 4K when you were when you play through Stadia. Well, it's not. It's it's something like 1440p that's upscaled <laughs> to 4K, and that's what's happening a lot. Is where you're getting these games that it's like okay. It's 1080p, but we're upscaling it to 4K, which I'm sure, you know, for someone that's a, a real video snob, like, but there's going to be reasons why that looks nice, but you're not getting a true 4K experience. And even then, do all of the games actually support it? Of course, the answer is going to be no. So, yeah, um, it, it's 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 tough to say, but uh, yeah. So uh, the, the other part of this leak that I thought was very interesting was that they're saying that there are most likely going to be games that are exclusive to the unit. Um, that And, and hmm. the, the word especially was used for third-party games, which makes me wonder, and I'm curious, Bruno, what you think. You know, do, you, do you think here that there's going to be a large number of titles that they're going to be like, yeah, you know, Switch, Super Nintendo Switch only? Obviously, that's always been the case. And I think, you know, what you were talking about before with the chipset that they're using or the processing power that's that's coming with the unit that obviously certain things aren't going to run on on this platform and we've talked about this before of like we're in this limbo area where there's this current gen of gaming that meets these current set of standards and then there's next gen gaming and what we expect from that and if the life cycle of something like the super nintendo switch is supposed to be four to five years like most of their consoles have been then i would argue that they're going to have to move forward and say yes there's tons of third party exclusives first party exclusives on here that don't get ported back to the switch so we might go through and see i i would venture to say we'll probably see the big titles hit both but we you know it might be towards the end of the lifespan sort of like we saw with the Wii U and the Switch with Breath of the Wild. So this is not the first time that Nintendo has released late in the lifespan of a, of a console something that kind of expands on it where you actually need the new hardware to play certain games. You can go yeah. all the way back to the Nintendo 64. Uh, they released that expansion pack very late that you could plug in there that you needed to play for like yeah. games like uh, Perfect Dark or Donkey Kong 64, yep. right? Um, yep. The Wii. They had the Wii Motion Plus attachment that they use. I think they use that for Skyward Sword, um, hmm. where it, you got you got better responsiveness on the uh, on the on the Wii mote um, that you needed for certain things. But the the point being that yeah, Nintendo's no stranger to waiting until late in the life of a, of a unit, and rather than saying, "Hey, we're going to double the <laughs> lifespan of it," like here's the next thing that you want. But this isn't a peripheral. This is a whole new unit. Again, new if thing. the leaks are true, which I, I think most likely it is. So my question is, um, you know, Breath of the Wild 2. You know, yeah. we know we're probably going to get more news on that this year. 
Um, oh, yeah. And it, there's a lot of speculation they're going to be aiming for a holiday 2021 release. Man, I hope so. Um, <laughs> man, I hope so. That, you know, it's it's it would be amazing. But the question that I have is, you know, are, I, I don't think that they're going to make it an exclusive um, for the, the the Super Nintendo Switch, but I could see them offering like an enhanced experience. Joel, do you think that's the way they're going to go? Yeah, I was wondering if they they were going to do that. Like, I remember Twilight Princess was on the GameCube and on the Wii. Yeah. Um, there's been a, a number of them that have been on both, like you said, Breath of the Wild with Wii U and on the Switch. Yeah, I wonder if they would do some type of different controls or or maybe like an enhanced gameplay. Now they're re-releasing Skyward Sword later, and there's apparently new game mechanics that are going to be in it. So, yeah, I'm wondering what that's going to look like and uh, how that will go moving forward. Yeah, I, I can't see them ever not having Breath of the Wild 2 on the original Switch. Um, yeah. But that, that would just be silly for them, I'm sure. But, yeah, I, I'm it'll, very interested to see if they're going to do something different for the new version. Yeah, you know, the Switch itself is such a wildly successful platform um, in terms of sales that yeah, it, really it is. would be it would be crazy for them to, to be putting out content that that's first party that's like, hey, you know, you this is only made for this one this one upgraded unit. You know, we we've seen what happens when uh, consoles do that, like we were talking about with the Sega Genesis and all the crazy add-ons and attachments. And, you know, before you know it, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm priced out. Like, I, I can't, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And like we've been talking about with the bots, I yeah. hope Nintendo's looking at that because if they decide to pull the trigger, now you're going to have all these people that are so desperate to play Breath of the Wild 2 <laughs> that can't, and they have to either play, you know, pay a four-figure price um, to some guy that's stockpiling these things. Um, but you know, this was a question that we used on the uh, Quit the Build community poll on Twitter. One of the perks of following us on Twitter, we do uh, community polls that you can kind of give input on. Um, yeah. And the what did the community was, have to say? We had a very divided opinion. So the question was, and this is like a hypothetical worst-case question. I yeah. said, would you buy a Super Nintendo Switch at launch if Breath of the Wild 2 was announced as an exclusive for that device. You can't play it on the standard Switch. Ooh. We had a lot of responses, and um, of them, 53% said yes and 47% said no. So it's pretty much right down the middle. And um, some of them did say mm. that, you know, hey, I, I I would still buy a Super Nintendo Switch anyway, so that's not yeah. factored into my decision, yeah. right? Um, right. But yeah, you know, they're, 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 there you go. Like right, right out right out of the gate, half of the people polled said that, you know, they, they would not make that upgrade, um, even though that game is pretty much a must have for any any Switch owner. And shout outs, uh, because I said if you, if, uh, you retweeted it, we would uh, we do shout yeah, outs. Yeah, buddy. So let's go down Who the we list, got? shall we? Who we got? Subject Waffles, I see you. Subject Waffles. Yeah. Robert Long. L Robert. Bob Long. Um, What's uh, going on, Robert? <laughs> He is an amazing Twitch streamer. I'm going to give him a shout out. Um, I, I, I love going through and looking for those uh, those small streamers on Twitch that are trying to get yeah. some views. And I, I joined this guy and he had a couple of views. One of the most positive people, uh, upbeat people, you know, and like, like we always talk about with Quit the Build, we're all about that positivity nice, and, and yeah. mental health and gaming. And boy, that guy was was it. So definitely check him out. Um, Robert Long, uh, Indie Gamiacs, they are a podcast. Also, Save no. versus Poison podcast. There we go. Nice little, nice little D and D reference there. Also, Wicked Universe, Thrill Joe Baggins. Thrill Joe Baggins, <laughs> what it do, Ken? How was, are you doing? That guy was crushing it on Beat Saber earlier. Love yeah, it. You love what? to see. It. He has nice. the whole VR setup, right? Where it's like alternate reality, like where you're in the game. I'm so jealous of that man. I wish. Oh I man, does he like have that. the googly eyes on the on the Oculus on the he thing? Because that's my. Oh man, that's my favorite. Yeah, oh, I yeah. love those. Of course, Pierce Unlimited. Oh they yeah, were right on. We yeah, know them. Yeah, they were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, the One Hour One Decision podcast. These guys are cool. They do a podcast about. Um, they watch a or they play a random game on Game Pass. They use like the surprise me button. They play it oh, for wow. an hour and then they decide if the game is worth uh, continuing to play or not. So it's like a total like roulette of like, what are we going to play? So check them out. Oh, as well. wow. That's and also cool. uh, Spastic Mind. Shout out to you as well. Thanks, everybody, for the retweets. Spastic. Nice. Thanks, um, guys. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about there with the Super Nintendo Switch. Again, Nintendo is going to adamantly deny all of these claims until they're all true in about six months. Um, I don't but, know. You know, I don't know at, what at you're the end of the day, about. it's just not confirmed. But wh yep. what do you what do you guys think for like, uh, like for a price point? Where, where do you think this thing is going to get priced out at? Five thousand dollars. <sighs> That's one million rubies. 
What's uh, the rupee translation from Hyrule to uh, right. like U.S. Yeah. dollar? That, that's like. what I'm wondering here. Um, I'm going to have to go break into a lot of houses and smash a lot of pots. How many V-Bucks is it going to take? I mean, so you had two ninety nine for the original Switch. So yeah. what are we saying? Are you just doing a clear three ninety nine? I mean, can they compete at that? Right. Uh, so here's here's the thing. If you they like Nintendo has to start competing with the current gen because saying like, hey, the Switch Pro is coming out and it's just as good as a current gen PS4 isn't really breaking the mold in terms of you know, graphical capabilities. Now I'm not saying that Mario needs, we don't, we need to see ray tracing in Mario. Nick and I have talked about this. We don't need to see I like, ray tracing. you know, seriously, we don't need to see, although it's beautiful and I love seeing the unreal engine, you know, <laughs> type of demos with that, but let's be real. We don't need that. However, we're talking about third party titles here and Third party titles are where these people are going to get left, you know, like the Super Nintendo is going to get left in the dust if it doesn't come out with something that can compete with what's going on now. So it, it will be very interesting to see how long this lasts in the, you know, my like you were saying, is this going to be a another five year console or are we talking kind of like just a, a somewhat upgrade to it? Like we did with the DSI and the 3DS and the, you know, that, that sort of, that sort of thing. So I was also wondering like, so with the Wii to the Wii U, that was an entirely different console, but people didn't buy it. Cause they're like, the Wii's already pretty nice. So do I need a Wii U? <laughs> and uh, I feel like, I wonder if any, there, I feel like the Switch is a, is a better console overall, obviously, but we'll, who knows if people are like, I already have a regular Switch. I don't need none of those fancy Switch Pros. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I I mean, I'm probably going to buy it. I'm a uh, Nintendo enthusiast. I mean, I can see just the guy sitting on his porch right now with like a <laughs> straw hat on and a piece of hay sticking out and just like, I don't know why we need all these newfangled Super 4Ks. Nintendo Switch 4Ks. I'm still <laughs> rocking the the regular, you know, TV I got and the Nintendo Switch is pretty nice if I say so. So <laughs> Shout out to my friends that play 30 frames a second handheld Fortnite. And are yeah. still Whoa. doing okay. Like, I don't yeah. understand it. I'm nice. like, okay, there's a guy 200 meters. They're like, I cannot see that person, Joel. I don't know. I don't. I've never seen it. It's a blur. Yeah. I've tried Fortnite on mobile and on Switch. And the other both, you know, 30 frames for the, you know, the hardware that I have. And you're right, man. Yeah. It's, it's rough. It is nice when you have the, uh, what, the gyroscope aiming. It is yeah. kind of a different way to experience the it's game where like, you know, when you're sniping, it's actually cool to like move, move, you know, the device and, uh, and actually have your, you know, your crosshairs move. But, um, yeah, 30 frames is rough and you're exactly right, Bruno, mm -hmm. you know, um, for example, Overwatch, you know, I bought that for Switch. Regret the purchase because it's not good. Um, <laughs> I, I, just, I hate to say Instant it. It's regret. Um, and it's more oh, so just that the it's, it's the frame rate, you know, that really brings it down. Um, and you can see where they had to cut a lot of corners with uh, with the graphics. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like what we were talking about with Apex Legends, like the Switch yeah. port's coming out. And it's like we want to be excited about this, but you could see in the video um, you know, just exactly what it was going to look like. And it's, man, man, it's, it's a hard sell. Um, the yeah. only, only people who want that are the people that, um, you know, are, are, they don't own any other console. Um, right. so like I'm going to go ahead and do it, but there's no way someone who has an Xbox or a PlayStation is looking at those ports and being like, that's the version for me. That's the one. Yeah. See, that's, that's, that's me. <laughs> I can also see kids, uh, you know, people wanting their kids to play with them maybe. And yeah. so they're saying, oh, Hey, you know, little Johnny, you can now play with me on your 22 frames a second you're going to get when you're in a fight, you know? Um, maybe not even that. Suffer, it's going to be like kid. 13 frames. They're like, um, I, I saw two guys, but they were like uh, blurs. I don't know what happened, Dad. <laughs> when I was your age, we had split screen, and yeah. there were four panels on a CRT TV. Well, th this will this will be a little bit of a, a date here, but uh, actually – I almost failed kindergarten because of Nintendo. Ooh. And <laughs> wow, <laughs> what did you do? Here, here's a quip for you all out in the QTB world. So uh, back in kindergarten, uh, the old Super Mario Three was oh boy. my jam. And you know, I'm trying to get Super Leafs to become Raccoon Mario. I I'm trying to beat all the worlds. And uh, here's what happens: I wasn't learning the normal things in in kindergarten. And about halfway through the year, my kindergarten teacher is like. Ah, Karen, my mom's Karen, unfortunate for the times of Karens. 
Joel's a very smart, bright young man, but uh, bright, bright kid. But you know, we're having some some issues of him paying attention, and he's not doing his homework. And um, you know, is anything wrong at home? Like, what's happening? And so, my unfortunately for my older brothers, who's seven and ten years older than me, they weren't allowed to play any games when they got home until they helped. Uh, tutor me on my <laughs> kindergarten work. Oh, wow. gee. On oh, your kindergarten so work. Turned it all oh, around. I'm happy to say didn't fail kindergarten, but Super Mario 3 beat it. Nailed it. Worth nice. it. <laughs> so I'm assuming that after you pass kindergarten, later on you just had this like weird desire to go to California and so you set off on this adventure to California and your older brother, Fred Savage, tried to stop you and bring you <laughs> oh back. God, and then he realized that all those years that you played Super Mario Brothers 3 was really just preparation for being a pro. And that's when he decided to enter you in the Los Angeles inter or is it Las Vegas international yeah. tournament where Nintendo you Power won the, yeah, the, where you won the championship. Yeah. I, 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 I can only assume that that's where the story was going. No, that would have been incredible, but uh, I, I unfortunately didn't enter any contests and that, I think that would have been such a turn of events. It really would have. Obviously, I mean, we would we would get more into that story, but I'm assuming it would probably take like, I don't know, like 90 minutes to tell the whole story from start to finish. <laughs> it's so. a 60 minute podcast. Ain't nobody yeah, got time so, for that. Yeah, we don't have time for that. <laughs> <Man>. so. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of which, we'll be right back after this. Hello, is this Irma Fu... Fafushnik, what do you want? Of course. Well, Irma, I'm calling to talk to you about podcasts. If you haven't heard, Anchor.fm is the easiest way to make a podcast. I don't have any money. I, I don't want anything. Well, with Anchor, you don't need any money. It's absolutely free, and you can record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Is this a cult? I don't, I don't want any Kool-Aid. No, ma'am, not that I'm aware of. Podcasts are like radio talk shows for the internet or talkies, as you might know them. Listen, young man, I am not that old, but I do remember them, so touche. <laughs> Whiskers, will you get out of there? <laughs> Devin me, clean the care box. He needs to get a job. Forty is too old to be living with your mother. Irma, I couldn't agree more. Jeremy could make money from a podcast. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. Okay, I'm hooked. No one would listen to Jeremy. He's not very smart. We all know I have the sexy voice that lures the gentleman in like a sexy siren mermaid lures in burly bearded pirates. Well, you can get started today. Just visit anchor.fm for more details. All right, it's 420 in the a.m. And we're back with an amazing, amazing uh, story about a demo that reached 2 million. And it feels like we're, we've been talking about this uh, with other games because when we mentioned... Um, What's that game? Valium? No, not Valium. Valiant. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Well, Close. Yeah, that, is, uh, the, that is a game that some people play, Bruno. <laughs> well, it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm looking at my my prescription here for Valium because I have to go into oh, okay. the dentist next next <laughs> next yeah. week. So this mm -hmm. is just going to take the edge off of it. But yeah. I, you know, so yeah, Valium. Val, excuse me, Valiant. Valheim. Uh, yeah, Valheim. There it is. Too many vowels. Uh, one of there's, those. There's too many. Val Kilmer. Valorant. <laughs> yeah, Valorant. Um, anyway, yeah. Ev week after week, man, it was just like 4 million, 5 million, mm -hmm. 6 million, 7 million, uh, where it's not quite up that high. Yeah. But I feel like with this mentioned on the podcast now, I mean, obviously, we're just going to see 3 million next week, to the 4 moon. million the week after. We we yeah. just like to call them hits. We're the hit what makers. What do you do? Yeah. What is up with Outsiders? Tell me about <laughs> this, Nick. Outsiders, yeah. It's the game <laughs> where you go outside. Which is Dang very it. scary these days. Dang it. Yeah, tell me about Outriders, too. Tell me about both of them. Listen, <laughs> I don't like the... This is why I shut my life... My light... My life... We're having a fun time here. This is oh, why man. I shut my light off during Halloween. I don't want those outsiders yeah. coming in there. 
from the makers of Valium comes Outsiders. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always wanted to go outdoors, but it's been scary. This is for you. Valium, take Amazing. the edge off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wow, we brought it all together. <laughs> yes, we did. Anyway, yeah. Outriders, we're back yes. on track here. Yeah. Outriders demo. What what it do? So, yeah, you're right. You know, um, the, the, the big news story is that this demo for Outriders has been downloaded 2 million times. I know what you're mm-hmm. saying because what Valheim has been down, has been purchased 5 million times. It's like as soon yeah. as I saw 2 million, I'm like, that those are rookie numbers. You got to pump those numbers up. Bush League. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Outriders is a uh, upcoming third person shooter with some RPG elements developed by People Can Fly. That's a fun name. It's like Toys for Bob. It's it's fun to say. Um, And uh, published by Square Enix. So... Mm. This is, you know, and we all got a chance, of course, to look at the uh, the demo gameplay. You know, it, it's it's essentially, you know, it, think of any cover style gunplay game, right? Like Gears of Gears War, of War, or yeah. The Division, you know, where you're you're kind of taking cover and and kind of you know re- returning fire, uh, but also some um, kind of upfront, uh, uh, up close and personal attacks in the form of kind of these like you know larger than life sci fi skills. Um, that kind of kind of a reminiscent of Destiny. Um, that kind of brings That's exactly it all together. What it looked like. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like, no, no crazy. You know, like we've said before many times, nothing super original happening here necessarily. But it's, there's it's, even a loot cave. They did find a loot cave. They did. did. So I mean, what? yeah. Did you guys <laughs> ever get to experience the original Destiny loot cave? I did. I did. I not. did. Yeah. All in its glory, and man, was it amazing. It just randomly dropped these orbs, and you'd run up there, and then you'd yeah. run back and do it again. Yeah. And that's what happened when I looked up um, looked up Outriders on Twitch. I saw this guy, and he was literally running in, throwing grenades at this thing. And as soon as he got the loot that he wanted, he'd die, let himself get killed, and then he'd do it again. And I was like, well, this is fun. So then I ch- switched to another stream because I was like, well, there's got to be more to this demo. If uh, There's two million people playing it. There has to be more to it than just a loot cave, right? And so then there was another streamer playing it, and it looked a lot like Gears of War. I was like, this looks like Gears of War meets destiny and yeah. that's exactly what it <laughs> what it is like yeah it's the leveling up system of destiny mm-hmm. meets the gunplay of gears of war minus the chainsaw guns which is a, a tad disappointing but i can live without it i can yeah. there was a ground pound in there so it's i can still pretty bloody like it uh there were some executions there where people were just kind of exploding in like puddles of blood Oof. where it's like okay Oof. Yeah, where it's, it's Tarantino it's, style. Exactly. But um, yeah, so the reason why people are, are farming this thing like I'll get out um, for a demo is because when the full game releases, if you purchase it, you will be able to carry over your progress um, wow, that's from a the first. demo. That's very rare. And it, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a, a successful business strategy, I think, because now people have incentive to get in there, play the demo and put some hours in so they can stress test this thing. Um, and totally. also, you know, get a, get a running start when the full game comes out. So, but that Luke cave is getting patched as they, as they always do. Um, but they like you know, to take the fun out of everything, don't they? There's nothing fun about a Luke cave. The only <laughs> thing fun about a Luke cave is <laughs> just like the friends you make cave. along the way where you're all just kind of hanging out in one spot. Um, and just, you know, going in and it, it, that, that part's fun, but yeah, yeah so this game, um, you know, it, it's going to be up to three player co-op. So it does kind of mimic, uh, destiny in that way with the size of squads, um, multi-platform release is going to be on April 1st. So we're a little under a month away. And this is pretty much, uh, all the hits except switch PC, PlayStation four and five, both the Xbox one and series X slash S, um, even Google Stadia getting in on the mix. Um, all your favorites got, are there. Yeah. It's like the Coachella. Yeah, Coachella of games. <laughs> um, you know, there was such an overwhelming demand that uh, server uh, the servers got stressed out quickly, but they were able to scale up um, due to the demand. So what are your guys' takes on uh, just how this game looks and how you think it's going to perform uh, long term? Well, I think that there's obviously been a need for a grindy type of game if you're not happy with Destiny and... There's not really much out there right now. So I think had this game come out at a different time, maybe when other games were more popular, it may not have fared as well. But timing is everything, right? So Mm -hmm. I think the timing of it is perfect. We don't really have much going on now in terms of like a game like we're waiting on the Fortnite uh, season event, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But obviously people want that kind of grindy experience or just the 
experience of something new, kind of like Valheim, like we were talking about. So, I mean, it's 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 hitting all those notes for everyone, right? So they must be doing something right. Yeah. The only thing that looked janky to me was I I've they need to work on the the grenade throw animation because it looked real bad. Like <laughs> it kind of looked like he shot putting it, but like he like puts in like I would say like a hundred and fifty percent effort, but the arc of the grenade shows like thirty percent effort. So it's very weird to see. I mean, that's if you're actually throwing liquidity. a shot put, that's probably about how far it would get. <laughs> it makes about sense. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Olympic Maybe. shot putters here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but yeah, yeah. It just that's the only thing that I thought that that you know may have needed some some addressing in terms of the the animation. So, Joel, yeah. what, what what did you think? It'll be interesting. I follow a number number of content creators on social media that are huge Destiny 2 players. And lately there's been some community concern for some of the raids and some of the things. And there's been some division in the community and they have some new updates coming out, but people are a little unsettled. So this might pull uh, a good chunk of the Destiny 2 players. And there's still people that are playing Destiny 1, which is funny. And uh, we'll see if that really gives a pull. And who knows if there'll be those cover style gameplay people that want to jump in and just check it out. And they're like, oh, cool, a grindy game too. I'm yeah. going to do it. I always love the class gameplay. Mm-hmm. I see the mm-hmm. Devastator, the Pyromancer, like the tanks and yeah. Fire Boyos. Um, you got to have a guy <laughs> named the Devastator or a class like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, something just the, the big and burly, the Titan. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. So that way we, you know, that entices the uh, Call of Duty boys the to trickster. come on over there. Hit and run yeah. time manipulation. That was a really cool looking class. I love those. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always, I mean, look, there's not going to be any kind of mechanic that you introduce to this kind of game that hasn't been done a million times before. Yeah, for sure. Overwatch yeah. Is, has taken every concept of a, an attack or, or crowd control or heal. And yep, it, they're like know, the Simpsons of, yeah. uh, of class-based it. video games. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> Which just got renewed for two more seasons. I can't wow. believe it. Wow. They just, I mean, they're, they're the, show, the show will not, the show will die with, uh, was it Matt Groening? Uh, it's, it's just that simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the, uh, the the class gameplay, and that's worth touching base on here because I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Joel. I love a good grindy game that lets you really get into a class and not just like pick a loadout with like, you know, SMG versus assault rifle and that kind of thing, but yeah. really have skills that make you feel like you're contributing to the to the gameplay in a unique way, right? Yeah, Devastator's gonna be your upfront in the in the gameplay video, like everyone else is taking cover. The Devastator did not. Um, they're just right up there in, in your <laughs> face. Um, which is tough to balance. I know a lot of games that try to do that, you know, when you get to the high level content, it's tough to have that person that's actually up front and and, and center. So hopefully they get yeah. the balance right there. Um, Pyromancer, yeah, kind of your medium range with with flame attacks and probably probably your high damage class. Technomancer, I love this type of support. Um, that is uh, long range support. Actually, does have healing abilities and also other support mm. abilities. But can like place turrets and that kind of thing too. So oh, that's be, pretty uh, cool. Yeah, and I, I, I'm I'm always a sucker for a game that has uh, you know classes that actually can heal the team. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, I'm always a sucker for anybody that just mimics Torbjorn because I love Torbjorn. <laughs> <laughs> I was always Anna, the long range healer. Like, yeah. here you go. Yeah. She was my favorite. So there you go. Yeah. Landing a well time sleep dark. Nothing more satisfying. Than <laughs> oh, that, feels man. so good. High skill, high fun. Yeah. But uh, and then, of course, yeah, the trickster is is kind of your stealth class that can manipulate time and like freeze people in place and that kind of thing. So the trickster. Um, yeah. And all sorts of cool teleporty abilities. Voiced by so. Mark Hamill. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> that really would be. <laughs> I, I love I love when Mark Hamill voices anything. That's, a, yeah. that's kind of like a villain. He's done like the, the Joker, I think, a couple of <laughs> yep. times and yep. that kind of thing where, man, he. He's just got that over-the-top voice. But yeah, so my big question for Outriders. So um, much like Marvel's Avengers, this game is, is published by Square Enix, not developed. And you know, Square Enix is once again in the news and under fire because Avengers, Marvel's Avengers is not doing well, guys. Like, you know, this game came out and it, it has the same story really with the releases, right? It came out for PC, PlayStation, Xbox, also Stadia. And the game just kind of came to a screeching halt um, that, you know, the content updates got slowed down. And again, like we've said before many times, you never quite know what, what the impact that COVID has had on a studio. They're never going to play that car, that, that hand up front with you. But, you know, the, 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 the windows for new characters got pushed back substantially, um, and there's just very little content. This is a game that has, like, two bosses, 
you know, mm. in a game that you're supposed to farm and level up. And people are, are still very upset that the game has, has been almost seemingly abandoned. Um, and just recently, right alongside this news of Outriders talking about shooting yourself in the foot, Square Enix decided that they wanted to make the game even grindier than it is now, and it is grindy, by mm. increasing the uh, XP needed to level up. Um, they said it was a linear progression. They want to make it more of a curve. So it's going to uh-huh. be substantially harder to max out your characters, which is a very important part of that game. And so my question is, if that game, which has a huge IP behind it, they were so lucky to get a hold of a Marvel IP um, yeah. and develop it like that, that they they botched it. I don't, I don't think anybody is going to disagree with that statement. Yeah. You know, are they, are they really going to be able to, and, and my perspective is, do I really want to be a day one player of a game where I could get burned again? Because I, I, I do think mm. I got burned with Avengers. Yeah, yeah um, totally. That I'm going to get to the end of it and be like, okay, you know, where's the new content? And there kind of isn't. Do you guys think this could be a repeat? So fun fact, um, we were talking about Mark Hamill uh, and the trickster. He actually did play the trickster. Um, in the, as the yeah, there's a, a DC super villain that's kind of like the Joker meets the Riddler. And he's known as the Trickster, and he played the original Trickster in the fl- original Flash uh, TV series, and he reprised his role for the yeah. new Flash TV mm-hmm. series, which is awesome. So I just had to put that out there because we did mention oh, that. I was tracking but... with you. <laughs> yeah. You were vibing with it. You knew. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I agree with you, Nick. And I, as somebody who played and bought – Uh, Marvel's Avengers and beat it and had a lot of fun with it. I, you know, I, I go back and I use this. It's, it's my favorite, it's my favorite like weapon to use in my arsenal against PlayStation because remember when everyone was like, and the uh, PlayStation uh, version of Avengers will have access to Spider-Man. And have they not released that yet? I'm pretty sure he's still not released. I've not seen anything. I feel like I would have seen something, Nick. Like, I haven't seen anything at all remotely saying that he's here. And I've seen, I think, what was it? Uh, Hawkeye's daughter or something like that. Or Mm -hmm. I don't know. Somebody got introduced to the game and it wasn't Spider. Yeah, Kate Bishop, there you go. And it wasn't Spider-Man because they would have made a bigger deal about it. So it's this, you know, so this is one of those false promises or or false hopes that that, uh, PlayStation put out there. Like, you know, come over to our side. We have all this this candy. And then you realize that it's like the wrapped presents at a a retail store during the holidays. There's nothing in them. There's not, they're empty. Yeah. So, yeah, I I'm with you on that, and I feel like there could have been more. It was a lot of fun to 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 fly around as as Iron Man, and it was great to to be the Hulk and and Thor. But strip all those away and just have Destiny like characters and. Mm-hmm. You know, Gears of War gameplay. It's like, yeah. are those two really going to equate to something, you know, amazing that's long lasting down the road? Or, or just like we talked about, is this something that just fills that gap of we need something to grind right now? Joel, what do you think? You've seen so many games come and go on Twitch. Yeah. Do you think this has some lasting power or is this kind of like a fleeting thing? Well, it's going to be interesting to see who jumps on it and obviously like with Valheim and some of those others um, huge streamers jumped on it and then it just kind of exploded on steam the number one on steam for a while and I wonder if this gets some of those big destiny streamers and some of the older gears of war streamers and and maybe some of the um, rogue company and other ones that jump in on it who knows I, I think it could for, for what I've seen of it so far, it, it doesn't have anything that kind of differentiates itself, but it might be just good enough at enough things that mm. the time it hits right now could get a good community on it. So I, I, I think it'll depend on what the community wants and kind of if people are interested in something like this right now. But it, it's a toss up. I don't see it being something huge, but I could be wrong. Well, yeah, well, time will tell. We've got a little under a month until the launch of this game, and uh, who really knows? And yeah, Bruno, it was it was, it was was crazy to me that Kate Bishop came out, which is Hawkeye's daughter, 
Yeah. And then the next DLC character that finally came out was Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Both of which who use, you know, a bow and arrow and like a sword. So it's like, okay. Like, but um, yeah, you know, t- time will tell, you know, it, it, and, and I, I think enough people are, are going to be cautious enough that they will, uh, you know, hopefully not get burned twice. But uh, we, we're we're just we're suckers for a good demo, aren't we? So yeah. no time to waste because we've got a, a very interesting segment here. And this is the first time we've done this. Um, of course, Joel, you are a, a big Twitch streamer there at uh, twitch.tv slash Kung Fu Penguin. You've been in the Twitch game for a long time now, bringing your uh, your brand of uh, positivity and fun almost entirely with Fortnite. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, just on, on our Quit the Build website, um, we just put up a new blog article about, you know, all of the big events um, and kind of ranked them. Uh, uh, was that according to you or Brad, Bruno? Uh, so that was according to me. I went ahead and ranked them. So I I, I decided to go ahead and, and release a, a blog article that went over all the events that we've seen. And, and I narrowed it down specifically to season events. So these don't include any of the concerts or anything like that, because I want, I felt like they could be ranked separately, obviously, because yeah. some of them have been live events and some of them have been like a pre-recorded event. So they're, they're completely separate for this. So I decided to go ahead and go through all of the events chronologically. And then I just ranked them basically what I thought they they deserved or, or how awesome they were to me experiencing them. Uh, and comparatively speaking to the other events that are that are surrounding them. So you can kind of see as things go along where this event got a little better and this event got a little better, but then it started to drop off here and there. So, well, we are going to be doing our new segment for this where Bruno, you're going to be listing these things off. And at the very end, Joel's going to be given a rating of his top three. It's something we like to call rate that thing. Rate that thing. Give it to him. All right. Okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's kick this off with the meteor event. That was the first event. Do you remember that Joel? This was when this is, this is, this is when there was a spot on the map called dusty depot. Everybody remembers that. And players started noticing this little tiny (laughs) comet in the sky. And we were like, Hey, what? Hey, what's that? And every day it got a little bit bigger and eventually it it crashed down into Dusty Depot and created Dusty Divot. Remember the hype surrounding that entire thing? The uh, it's amazing to me that we've come from that which was is something happening? Like what? What is that? You know, it felt like Majora's Mask, Dawn of the Second Day. Dawn, you know, like <laughs> it's like that. Oh, it's bigger. Do I see a play face? The song. Play and the like, song. Yeah, like play every song. time. Play yeah, gotta go back. Gotta go back. Um, but oh my gosh, there was so much hype. And then I remember when Dusty Divot was available. Uh, I would just drop there every single game because oh, there'd yeah. be like fifty people plus there. Yeah, and some of my like highest elimination games in Fortnite were just dropping dusty getting a, the one a, shotgun getting but somehow getting so lucky getting a scar and a yeah. shotgun and just rolling through it so good so the the meteor event brought forth uh a, an alien visitor known as uh the visitor very very Whoa. aptly named yeah i know they're breaking ground here with uh the name game so the whole season centered around the building of this rocket in the villain's lair and eventually the the rocket launched zipped across the sky in and out of rifts this is one of the first time we had seen these rifts appear and everybody thought this was the end for Tilted Towers. Do you remember that? Like the whole community was like, it's going freaking down. out. Like, we're you know, they were, tilted. We're, we're losing we're t- Tilted, man. Everybody go to Tilted. We're not going to be able to play it next week. And so Tilted became this, this center hot drop because not only did the community think that Tilted was going, but Epic decided, well, we're going to go ahead and play into that community, you know, theory and set up tons of things around around there that make it seem like it's a dooms this doomsday event or something's going to happen to tilted um but eventually it uh reappeared near loot lake and zipped up to the sky and formed the crack 
Not the crap, but the crack. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I, I kind of ranked a little bit lower than the, the or a little bit higher in terms of um, the event, just because it felt like it was the, it was the follow-up. So it kind of answered a lot of questions of like, what's going on? And and we were expecting something. The first time around, it was, we didn't really know what to expect. But the second time we were like, oh, they're definitely going to do something. Did you remember the blast off or were you more of a fan of the meteor event? Or did these I, oh, two? Oh, I remember the, the rocket launch. I specifically remember the next day reading a Reddit article because uh, this was before um, when the event started happening, uh, you couldn't kill anybody. So mm. the later in the events, they made it so yeah. that you couldn't kill anybody during the event so that everybody yeah. could experience it. But there was a Reddit post where like they made this huge ramp and this tower to heaven and like 48 or something people were up on top of this ramp. Some little kid was at the bottom and <laughs> chopped it all down and got 40 something kill or 38 kills, something crazy. And everyone was like, you kidding me? The clip is hilarious. You just see, doo -doo -doo -doo. you just see the feed is blowing up. That so and so gotta, knocked gotta them. See that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, so yeah. this kid at the time, he had the highest kill game in Fortnite because oh, it was wow. like 38 or 20. I don't remember how many it was. It was like 30 kills um, of knocking down, chopping this tower of all these people. It was glorious. And I remember like <laughs> being so nervous, like on stream, like, okay, 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 okay. I can't get killed. I got to get a good spot. I got to get some meds to make sure nobody's okay. Because there's still, there's a couple yeah. jack wagons that are around there just trying to kill people during the stop, 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 stop. Like, yeah. um, But no, I remember that being like, this is incredible. Like, and remember, right. like, who's this visitor? Where is he going? Like, what's going to happen? Then the crack happening, like, what is happening? Like, just freaking out. Love yeah, it. they definitely quickly patched that idea of being able to kill right at the start uh, because it ruined a lot of people's experience that that they you know, were waiting so long for. But it eventually made way for the the rift in the sky eventually um, created this uh, giant cube. Some lightning came from the sky and a purple cube appeared over by Paradise Palms. Remember that place, everybody? Yeah. They named that cube, right? <laughs> we did it. name that cube. The community named him Kevin. I don't yeah. <laughs> know why. I love it. I love it. <laughs> And, and Kevin started started moving around the map. He was this. This is why I think he got named. If it was just a giant cube that sat there, right. No big deal. But Kevin started moving around, so he started going around the map, and he left these six runes across the map uh, that had these glyphs on them, and and everybody was trying to figure out what what they meant and everything. And he eventually settled down at the Loot Lake House and turned it into a floating island. Island. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember Kevin? <laughs> I remember Kevin. And the floating island was was another fun one where like thirty plus people would go and land there. And if you're going for high limb games, you're landing floating island with Kevin every <laughs> single game. Yeah. And the, the the annoying thing was though is people would jump off this like if you're about to kill someone they would jump off the side and then fly yeah. around the other side like come back here and you're just like in limbo yes. flying around the sky trying to chase people down oh that was so ridiculous but i uh yeah i loved the floating island kevin was fun um not as memorable of an event but i remember like every day logging in like ooh where's kevin going to be where's like, kevin going to be excited <laughs> like let's find him where's stream. kevin you know like <laughs> it was like kevin. let's go look let's go look um well the the floating island and Ke and and the cube event kind of go hand in hand this was really interesting because it was like 3 months later they decided to do the, the it was towards the end of the season or it was actually in the middle of season 6 they did both of these right in the middle so in the middle of season five they did one and in the middle of season six they did the next one uh and the floating island kind of ran around back to the runes that kevin had created gathered up power went back to loot lake drained its power became leaky lake and then players were blown into oblivion and there was a, a, a magic light butterfly. And we can't forget the magic light butterfly. Explain this one to me, Joel. What do you what do you think so, about this? So one? the rift butterflies, the thing that this was really crazy is this where I was like, wow, I, I can't believe this battle royale is actually immersive. This is the, this is where I like changed my view of what a battle royale could be and why mm -hmm. I was like, 
props to Epic here because when it pulled you out of the map and you're in some like other ethereal world in mm-hmm. this like butterfly and the rift is flying and you're seeing this like little rift butterfly, I was like, this is it. This is the best thing ever. Like it was so cool. And just collectively like seeing everybody freaking out and everybody in your party like, what is happening? <laughs> like that yeah. was, I, this one ranks really high for me just because it was like the wow. first time uh, there was something that pulled us out of the map and it was something yep. completely different. Um, yep. And so I, that was very, very memorable for me. It was, and I, we, we're still getting effects of this event now because this is like the, the rift in between worlds type atmosphere yep. that we're still playing into the quote unquote story of what Fortnite mm-hmm. is today. Yes. And the next, the next event isn't quite, uh, it's not, it doesn't really fit into the main story like in any specific way, at least yet, but this was the ice storm. Uh, this was when the giant ice King came out of the map and basically changed the entire map right before our eyes. And it changed. It basically went from like a normal map to like covered with snow. And this is the first time we'd ever seen the entire map change. And it was really crazy. Do you remember jumping out of the bus and seeing how big the Ice King was? I think we all kind of expected it. Like, winter's coming, you know, Game of Thrones. Um, Do you remember that? Yeah, it was very interesting. I Season 7 was one of my favorite seasons because of the snow. And and I just love it. Igloo theme, penguins. (laughs) Yeah, that's a penguin back bling. They had (laughs) a penguin glider. I was like, this is my time! (laughs) Um, And then they added planes. I was like, okay, I take it all back um then it was just oh, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. so that it was a blessing and a curse because everybody was like oh se- season seven suck because the planes but i'm like penguin back bling i mean come on, <laughs> come on. so yeah. it made it for me let's talk about this so i loved the snow and that was like my vibe like i loved the season um yeah the ice king was pretty interesting i i loved the uh the change of the map like that was so fun to me um for me personally it was really great it might not It'd be as high for everybody else because it you know might be like oh it's just ice whatever but I yeah. loved it I thought it was such a fun change and it like uh you know added something different to to the game for me definitely and now one of the 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 next event we're going to talk about uh, as we move along is something that I didn't personally experience but I watched it I watched it live the unvaulting slash volcano event now this is when this is the first time that basically epic put us back in the void and said we're going to unvault one of the one of the guns so the as Kevin made his way back to Leaky Lake. We it revealed that there was this vault underneath, and lo and behold, the vault was filled with all the guns that they had gotten rid of and uh, items they had gotten rid of from previous seasons. And they allowed the community to come in and vote for their favorite weapon to come back or favorite item to come back, and they chose. The drum gun. Now, Joel, did you want the drum gun or were you hoping no, for one of those I, other ones? All the ones? little Timmies out there, what were you thinking? <laughs> I was so angry. Dang I, I you, was Timmy. like, please, the bouncers, the bouncers, they're great. <laughs> like, th- that's something that's useful. That's like, you know, p- great for the game. And yeah. everybody was like, bring back the drum gun. It's like one of the most overpowered <laughs> guns in the game. And they're just jumping in your box over and over again. Stop it, Timmy. I had, you know, I, you know, I, the people that I care about. Stop this, you know. And of course, yeah, they're just there. Are so many people. It was like a landslide. Like probably like eighty percent of these kids just jumped on that. Uh, when I was watching clips over and over again, like everybody, in my yeah. like I think it was like eighty percent of the people in my lobby were just smacking that stupid. Uh, pillar for I, I did see one clip of uh, of a guy that was because uh, I looked up clips for for this for the blog article. So actually, for the listeners out there that want to see what these events look like, just go to quitthebuild.com slash blog and you will see the posts that we're we're referencing here. And there's a there's a video in there for each event. And one of the events had this guy and he was all by himself just just swinging his pickaxe trying to get the grappler. He just really was feeling the grappler and not a single soul was around him. Everybody was like, the drop gun. 
fine. And he was just like, I'll take the grappler, please. Yeah. Please. <laughs> yeah. The grappler. And then I think there was, there was like one guy over by the plane and everybody was like, stop it. Stop it, bro. Like, please don't. Stop. Please don't no, do this. No, no, <laughs> They actually booted him. They were like, no. Nah. <laughs> uh, <horse> quit. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, uh, now, now we're going to move on now. So I, 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 I considered this the least best event. This not, not, it just, it was cool, but like, it wasn't particularly like memorable in any way. Eventually the volcano blew up and, and um, it leveled tilted tower. So it did kind of change the map a little bit, but uh, it, it wasn't very memorable in terms of an event. Now, this next one, I feel like is what everyone remembers when they think of a Fortnite event. And that is the final showdown. So okay. Epic. This for those for our listeners out there, this was essentially Godzilla versus King Kong. It was a giant monster mech battle, and they ran across the entire map. They battled each other in the most epic of ways. He goes to Tilted Towers, which was Neo Tilted, I believe, at the time, and he pulls out a sword from Tilted Towers. I don't know where they were hiding that, but he pulls his sword out and then proceeds to mess up this monster, and then the bones of the monster remained on the map so for all to see so that we can remember 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 the the battle of Fortnite. <laughs> i love this and the giant monster still had the castle from the ice season from season seven on his back because <laughs> while while you're in season seven there kept more and more of the castle kept melting and you could yeah. see little parts and you would hear like this dragony type sound. And everyone mm-hmm. was like, is this going to be a game of Thrones type of thing? And they, <laughs> and what it really was, was this monster. And at the very end, you saw an eye appear. Um, yeah. And so it was building up and building up and building up before season nine, where you kept knowing this monster was coming. You would hear it. There was a breath that would like push your character and you could hear wind coming oh. from the guy. And then he appeared out in the water uh, and then they go for this epic showdown. I agree. This was, if not my favorite, definitely one of my favorite events. I absolutely love this. It, just being so hype, jumping out. Everybody like they're in the shop. There was there was team uh, monster or team yeah. mech signs yeah. you could team get banners. that were emotes. Yep. Yeah, um, and you could get the skins for each. Um, so it was such a fun. I, I think even the banners were free. Like you could get one yeah. or the other. Yep. In the just, shop, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just chose fun. one or the other. Yeah, it was really um, neat. That, that was such a good, like that definitely such a fun, like playoff of the King Kong versus Godzilla, you said. Nick, um, did you uh, did you happen to play or see that one or? I, I've seen uh, videos of it, but and, yeah. and the main reason why I've been taking a backseat this conversation is because you guys are, you guys are the Fortnite guys. Like I, I, I popped <laughs> in and out, but uh, you know, but I mean, come on. I mean, essentially it's a, it's a, it's a Megazord battle, you know, against yeah. uh, oh, yeah. a exactly. giant monster. Oh, oh, yeah. That's exactly oh, yeah. what it was. Yeah, you, I mean, you're, you're this, gonna, yeah. this giant mech is nothing more than a, than a giant Megazord from pieced together from different parts mm-hmm. of the map. So very, very, very clever. If you if you only go and see one of the events, make it the final showdown. Um, you can see that on quitthebuild.com. But moving on, the end, season X, season 10, the final event of the first chapter of Fortnite comes to a close. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this this was another one that ranked really high for me. Um, it, it, it took place over the entire map. And then there was this massive void again. And then we got the new map eventually but yeah. do you remember staring at that black screen for several days because i, I sure do <laughs> and i was there i remember kids that were like crying and, yeah. and were like yeah. in distress because they wow. thought that fortnite was done no i know personal wow. like friends wow. their their kids were like crying and like in distress that Fortnite was done. They well, thought they, that's crazy. They, that they, Fortnite they, was dead. They staged it that way. Like when you went on social media, like Fortnite was talking about like how it was like it was done. Like we were gone. It's over. Like I don't mm. remember exactly how they were doing it, but there was like the Fortnite themselves. Like Epic was 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 they framing it, the it end. Yeah. as like the, it's the end of Fortnite, guys. Sorry. <laughs> 
which is, yeah. just seems which seems to me absurd that a company yeah. would just like we were talking about just pull the plug all of a sudden one day and be like, you know what? I think we're done. I think we're good. We're going to pack up shop here and move along. Most like, profitable game ever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pulling it out, guys. So we're done here. <laughs> yep, we're done. Well, and, and then there's the streamers that were going, you know, 48 plus hours. Like, mm-hmm. we got to make it through this, guys. We got to get there together. And yeah. like, it was like a sleeping week long. on stream, yeah. sleeping, yeah. sleeping on stream just to try to make it like so and funny. And that event made so much news because of just yeah. that, because of the, it was a great publicity stunt that there were like, yeah. like local network news stations talking about this. Yeah. Um, that it got so much publicity. So it was a genius move um, just from just from the, so the advertising aspect of For it. Because sure. who, who wasn't playing? Anyone that's even remotely close to Fortnite was checking out that next season. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely one of the one of the most memorable ones aside from the final showdown. But uh, I really like the way they've been moving with this almost alternate reality with the agency. And so that's the next event. It's called the doomsday event um, by the community, but it's also known as the device. And this is where we get to see, first of all, it was where we, I think this was the first first person uh, time we've ever had where we were actually first person and we're agent Jonesy, who is the owner of the agency And it's in this like alternate reality, alternate world riff space, whatever, which is like you said, still going on today. You know, they're using the riffs to go to different games and pull different heroes from different games to bring them back to help with whatever's going on this season, something big. But um, this was the time that this was the first time where uh, Fortnite like broke the fourth wall. And you know what I mean? They, they kind of like really referenced themselves. It was very meta. So uh, does this one stick out in your mind particularly? Yeah, it, this was interesting. I loved when you uh, looked, like you said, first person, and you're like looking yeah. around the room and you see the files, and they were like yeah. releasing <laughs> these audio files on their social media are super cryptic, and that's yeah. still playing today. They have they're hyping up the new event that's yep. coming later the month, or we think um, that uh, still has these files from Agent Jonesy. So we you could find files in the world on the map in part of your quests or challenges Mm -hmm. and it would play through the story so it's kind of interesting because this is being a battle royale you don't think of like kind of quest or things inside the game and so this was interesting this season really felt like this event where you had a continuation of that and you're like okay what's happening next like oh okay so here's part of the story here's this yeah um so for me being uh someone that does really enjoy story driven games uh, it did add a fun element into the battle royale. At- um, and the final, the last event that we that we have bringing us up to speed was the the Marvel Fortnite crossover. This was the Devourer of Worlds, the Galactus event. And what's not to love about being in a giant battle bus and fighting Galactus alongside the Avengers? I mean, it sounds like a fever dream that you might have had, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is these are these are the dreams that you have when you're sick. And we were in the battle bus, and I was shooting a laser, and <laughs> Iron Man was I there. I was and John Wick. Thor. <laughs> 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 I was, and John Wick was there, and <laughs> there was a banana peel, and uh, <laughs> there was the some fishies peel. flying around. It was weird, man. <laughs> yeah. Did you uh did you like the uh did you like this event? This is I, I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about it, but I, I personally really liked it. It kind of hit the other notes but gave yeah. me something to do. Yeah. Uh so I really dug it. What about you? I thought it was fun. I loved putting on the jetpack and, and it like pulls uh, you up and you jump out. That was a really cool moment. Um when you dawn the jetpack and you go up and you're like Iron Man, like he shows up and he's talking to you. You're like, come on, man. Um, Let's go. It, mm-hmm. The second part when you're fighting the battle bus was fun. Um, but I, I don't know. There could have been a little more for me there. Um, I mean, it's Galactus. Like, yeah, be, people are like, did he die from that? Like, so so some people are like a little bit disappointed because we don't That's know. That's my question. So I don't know if he was really destroyed from that. My right. personal, and then we'll talk about this in, in just, just a hot second. We'll get your opinion. But mm-hmm. I think it's going to be continued 
okay. with this season where yeah. we're going to have Galactus come back and then everyone has to fight him. That it wasn't enough to get the the Avengers. We had to get Master Chief. We had to get Kratos. <laughs> yeah, to get they the got to fill him in there. Chun Li. <laughs> We had to get Ryu. We had yeah. to get The Walking Dead. Peter Griffin's okay. on the way. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think this – do you think that he might come back with this next event or – How much marketing money do we think that Epic Games is going to put on this? <laughs> like really? how much money are they going to put back into this? Because, you know, they're, they're still releasing new skins yeah. for Marvel and uh, who knows? Like are, I wonder if there's – like how far – their licensure with a you know the marvel universe is and if maybe they were like kind of left it ambiguous because they were like well are we going to keep going with this or is this making well rumor has it rumor has it that the final the final crossover character that's going to be added to fortnite is none other than ant-man and that really kind of gives me vibes that maybe we might be seeing the return of Galactus and yeah. Ant-Man might come out of the fray to have a giant mech monster battle part de, yes. where we have <laughs> Ant-Man versus Galactus along with everybody else in in the uh, uh, in the lobby. So that's kind of my hope with the crossover event and what I think it might be. Let's get your ranking here, Joel. What were your top three of all the of all the the different events that have come out of here yeah. that have pertained to the season? What's have which have been Quick your favorite? Quick aside, I just want a Paul Rudd skin. Can I just be Paul Rudd? <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, Ant-Man's yes. great, but I just want to be Paul Rudd. Yes, <laughs> right? let's be honest. <laughs> Uh, just a yes man variant where he's yeah. just yeah, yeah, you yeah. know slapping the bass, slapping, you know, the, slapping the bass. Up yeah, here. Pretty yeah, much, yeah. pretty much every Paul Rudd character is just Paul Rudd. To be it fair, it is. That's what I'm yeah. saying, and I love it. <laughs> um, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, I would say. Ooh, so I don't know if it's in a particular order. The three that I thought of: a butterfly event, because that was like the mm -hmm. first event that it really pulled us out, and I was like, this is bigger than just a um you a know battle, battle royale. royale i was like yeah. there's something like this is huge um so i think that um the the mech battle and the i think in the end because we yeah. had a new map mm -hmm. that was like what people were looking forward to yeah. now i hated having the meteorite or asteroid like you know the black hole for all that long time three yeah. three days or whatever um but i it think was. the <laughs> new map and all that like stuff month. was so exciting i remember getting up at 4 a.m to stream um, when they finally that day released the season X oh, yeah. um, and doing that. And so, yeah, I think I didn't get any work done that day whatsoever. <laughs> I was just like, Twitch, I am going to be watching somebody yep. stream this all day. What is this place? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I would think probably the mech events, probably my favorite followed Definitely. by the butterfly event in the end. Um, honorable mention being the ice event because yeah, Igloos and penguins. Yeah, you're about um, <laughs> But those would be my my four with like the honorable mention there. The how I mean the mech battle was just I just remember that was like one of the uh, videos I love on my YouTube channel. It's just so fun, like the reactions. And uh, I know uh, I think both of you at different times have been um, we've been streaming those events um, yeah. together, and so that's fun. There's it's just something about being together. A couple of them they let more than just your squad of four. They let yeah. like eight or or more in there, so you couldn't immediately see their health bars, but you could talk to them. And so, yeah, yeah. getting everybody's reactions is just such a fun thing. We're like, Are "You kidding me?" And everything, I'm like, "Ah!" You know, like people in the <laughs> background at their house screaming. You know, like it's just so fun. So I think like those big events with the butterfly um, riffs and the mech in the end were just yeah. Man, I'll tell you what I was I was privileged to be I just did listening in on this conversation of uh, two guys that have, have seen just about everything that uh, Fortnite has to offer. But, I love uh, it. Yeah. Well, Joel, listen, thanks so much for coming on the show. So happy and, to be uh, here. Yeah, everybody, make sure to give him a follow. Check him out at twitch.tv slash kung fu penguin. Um, there will be a link in the description to this podcast that will get you uh, right onto his page to uh, support him. We're always about uh, supporting not only small streamers, but people that have a, a positive attitude and streaming is something that's, that's sorely needed. Um, and, uh, you know, you definitely bring that to the table each and every uh, episode. Always, always yeah. a treat to watch. 
Yep, and um, we're going to be so, doing a write-up on quitthebuild.com slash mm-hmm. blog where you can read more information about Joel and uh, some of his favorite Twitch clips and just get to little, just get to know him a little bit better because uh, he's one of our QTB correspondents and uh, we do appreciate having him on. And we appreciate all of you for listening out there. I mean, it's not only a privilege for us to uh, talk to each other, but it is a privilege to have you guys listen in. Every week, we see our numbers growing. You have been uh, leaving us great feedback and checking out the website. So we really could not thank you enough for all the support that you've given. And if you want to help us out, be sure to share all these links with your friends. Tell them about Quit the Build. Send them to quitthebuild.com slash community, where they can check out all our socials. They can can follow the plops and see what's going up with <laughs> these it, with, with, it. with the Marksburg <laughs> with Earth Ploppers because they're going to play one of these days. I'm sure they're going to play one of these days. That's right. But you know, maybe when it's not rained out. So yeah, I got to be a water boy. Uh, I mean, do you have anything else for the people, Nick? No, man. Just uh, yeah, check it out. Thanks for your support so much, and uh, we will we will see you on the next podcast. Yes, thank you guys so much. We do have a podcast every Saturday and Wednesday, so be sure to follow us wherever podcasts are heard. Until next time, for Joel and Nick, I'm Bruno, and for Bruno and Joel, I'm Nick. Peace out. What it do. <laughs> <laughs>